Welcome to Books on Air, the podcast you don't want to miss. I'm Suzanne Harris, and you, dear listeners, are about to get a sneak peek at what goes on behind the scenes with authors. You're going to find out their secret recipe for creating a book. They'll tell you where they get their ideas, and you'll get the inside scoop on their newest project. Want to know more? We'll tell you where to find them on social media. Are you ready? Well, let's meet today's author. I'm so excited to introduce you to T.T. Floyd. She's here with me today to talk about the latest book in the Bully Brigade series, There's Something About Koki Michaels. T.T. Floyd is no rookie when it comes to writing or education. She's a literary award winner. She won the Lit Pick Top Choice Award as well as a Five Star Reader's Favorite Award. She holds a Bachelor's of Arts degree in English Literature, a Master's of Science in Curriculum, Instruction, and Technology, and an EDS in Educational Leadership. T.T. has been a professional educator for 15 years. She teaches reading comprehension to elementary and middle school and high school students. T.T., I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to talk to you today. Welcome to Books on Air. Hello, Suzanne. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. (laughs) Good, because I'm excited about what you're doing. You know, it, it occurs to me that authors are usually made and not born. Usually there's there's something. Either they had a relative that influenced them or there was um, an event in their life or a teacher or there's some something that steered them in the direction of deciding to write. Do you have a story like that that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yes, I actually started writing when I was in the fifth grade. Wow. It was my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Willie Mae McLean. Um, She's no longer living, but she was a great inspiration to me. Um, She would, it's just the way she introduced literature to the class. Um, She really helped me to begin to find my voice. Um, She always would have us enter into different contests. I remember entering into the Ralph Nader Peace Hero Contest in her class where I received an honorable mention. And from there, um, on my own, I entered a contest for the National Library of Poetry where my work was published in the 1995 version of Journey's of the mind. Um, So she was really influential in the beginning stages of me learning how to write. I love um, that story. Being creative. I love that story. You and I are both educators, and she does know that she influenced you, right? Yes, she does. Oh, I'm so glad that you were able to to share that with her and tell her. That just had to, I mean, when a student says something like that to you, you know how exciting it can be. I know that you've been on the other end of that that reception and had the same thing probably happen to yourself. Yeah, it's exciting. I can't believe you started writing at such a young age. That's, did you keep it up through high school and college? I did. I began writing for the school newspaper in middle school and high school. And then by high school, I had my own double page spread that was called Off the Hook. Wow. So we would feature different stories and so forth. Um, and then in college, I actually ran away from writing because in college, I was still trying to find myself. So I, I think I was every major. <laughs> I went through accounting, biology, and other majors as well, but it all came back to my first love, which is writing. And education. Yes. How did you come up 
with the idea for the Bully Brigade. I think this is so clever and so timely. Oh, my gosh. In the beginning, it was so corny because the title <laughs> of the story was Busta Brown and the Bubblegum Gang. Uh, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed to even say that. It was corny and it was cheesy. And it wasn't until Amanda Joyner Francis was killed in the restroom at a high school in Wilmington, Delaware. She was jumped by a group of girls. And that situation actually helped me shape my story because I knew that my story needed purpose. And um, I didn't want to just stick with some cheesy story where there was no substance to it. So that's what made me change the name. So I liked the name The Bully Brigade, but at the same time, I was like, well, it needs to be anti. And I can't say the anti-Bully Brigade. I can, but it just it doesn't sound too catchy to me. The, the so, alliteration doesn't work. Right. So my husband, he said, well, think about Ghostbusters. You know the symbol, the sign? And, and I was the anti-sign? I was like, oh, you're right. So that's when I added the anti-symbol over the title on the Bully Brigade. So it really is about anti-bullying. You know, it's often that seminal event that makes something like a story. Your idea was there, but it hasn't crystallized. And that seminal real-world event influenced you and crystallized the idea, much to, I think, the, the joy and, and wonder that's, that people are going to have when they really start reading these books. Because... As a former teacher myself, as I read through the book, it, it struck me how many ways this idea could be used. Let's talk about specifically the new book. Let's talk about there's something about Cokie Michaels. Let's give the, lead, the listeners a little bit of an overview of the book, T.T. I don't want to give away too much. Don't give um, away too much. <laughs> but I really, out of all the books I, I, in the series so far, I, this is one that I really enjoyed writing the most. Um, but Koki Michaels is about a new kid that comes to the school and the, br the brigade rallies around him to protect him from the school's most infamous bullies, which are Penny Proudfoot and Andy Pitts, and he is the Pitts, as his name suggests, Pitts. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll notice throughout the story, they never call him Andy. It's always Pitts because his behavior and how he antagonizes them, the gang and everyone else, he is the Pitts. So it's pretty much about them standing up and empowering their peers to rally around him and provide him with a place of refuge. Because let's to, face it, Koki is a little bit of a different kind of kid. He's got some issues right. that would make him stand out and not in a good way to the people around him. He's, and I'm using my air quotes now, he's different. And I really right. liked the way that, that you presented that. You had him do certain things in classes, and yet on one hand he does something that's astonishing, and yet on the other hand there are, is, is something that's just not right. And the kids keep thinking to themselves, there's just something about Cokie Roberts that ain't right. And they can't put their finger on it. He's different. And so as I read through this, I thought this theme, especially right now with all of the upheaval and all of the, the things that are going on in the country, this theme and the way that you have presented it, I think is so important and not just different because he does things funny, but 
there are different people all around us the same way. And I just thought that what you're saying in this book is so universal. Did, do you know a kid like this? Where did this character come from for you, T.T.? Well, I don't necessarily know a character like this. Um, I did a lot of research, but I just wanted to bring to light his disorder mm -hmm. so that other children who may not know about it can learn about it. Um, I did my absolute best. Um, I researched different, you know, characteristics or traits as it relates to the disorder. I don't really want to say what it is because I don't want to give away the book. But, right, right. Um, it was very fun creating the character and watching how everyone else perceives him. And I think sometimes when things are foreign to us, whether it's people um, or issues, we don't want to address it. We don't want to touch it. We don't want to talk about it. So I, it was very important for me that important to me that um, I bring this to light for children who may not know about the disorder. And through the story, offer the ways that they can help their peers who may be going through something similar. I love that. Let's talk about some of the other books. Now, how many books are there in the Bully Brigade series? Right now, there's three that are published. I just finished a fourth, which has to do with um, cyberbullying. And then I also have another one in the works. Um, that one's very important to the series to me because it has to do with offering children a place where they can write down their experiences with bullying. So just as we as adults, when we're dealing with workplace bullying, the first thing they always tell us is to document, document, document. I think that children should do the same. Oh, that's great. So if you're being bullied, if you're being bullied inside the journal, it's called the blackout. It'll be out at the beginning of next year. But inside the blackout, it's um, pretty much where children can keep a record of their experiences with bullying. So you'll write the time that it happened, the date, the people involved, what was said. Was there a follow-up response to what happened? Because I think that's very important that children have documentation as well, just in case it gets out of hand, they'll be able to give that to, um, they'll be able to give that information to a lawyer if it gets that far or just to someone they trust that can help. Good. I think that's wonderful. Protect them. How, how did you come up, them. how many characters, how many kids, and I'm again, air quotes, how many kids make up the Bully Brigade? There are six. So we have Petey. Petey is level-headed and resolute. Then we have Charlie. She's sassy and she has a bold nature that shields her from being hurt by bullies. Um, she knows how to brush them off and her confidence stops their attempt to mess with her or antagonize her. We have Buster, who's extremely confident. He's a force that won't stop until victims get justice. There's Ruthie, who's extremely empathetic and caring. She's willing to listen. And then we have Diego, who's the life of the party. He's like the Mr. Cool of the group. <laughs> he's, prop he's popular and he just likes to have fun and he wants everyone to get along. And then the final character is Pudge. He's nonchalant, he's laid back, and he's pretty cool under pressure, but he's always willing to lend a helping hand. I think your language that you use for the kids when you have the kids talk, and I love the teacher. I love the teacher. He calls them Mr. kiddo Fonferi. dittos. Yeah, kiddo dittos. Yes. I think that's just so cute. The, the way that the kids talk, the language that they use, 
to my adult ear sounds authentic. Did you pick that? Do you think you pick that up because you're you also teach kids that are the age yes. that you're that you're using in the book? Yes. Um my writing style is very colorful and entertaining and empathetic. I agree. I'm a storyteller at heart, but I also like a little entertainment, but at the same time it's very important to me that the characters are authentic, that they come off as real because Let's keep it real. The Bully Brigade, they are not perfect children. <laughs> Good. And and that's the whole point. I, I want my readers to know that they're just like you. They make mistakes just like you. They say things that they probably shouldn't sometimes just like you. So it's very important to me to show that my characters are flawed as everyone else in the world and that people are imperfect, which is another reason why, um, speaking of people being imperfect, which is another reason why the school, the name of the school is Misfit Elementary. Because I think at some point in everyone's lives, we felt like misfits, like we don't fit in somewhere. I think you're absolutely right. I really like what you're doing with this, and it made me think about parents who may be homeschooling their children. I don't know who you had in mind when you wrote this. Was your audience to be a parent reading this to a child? Was it the child reading it to themselves? Who did you have in mind as the audience for the Bully Brigade series? The children. The children. Because they will read it and they they will hear the kids' voices, won't they? Right. And I wanted them to see how the brigade, how when they face challenges, those challenges actually help strengthen their friendship and their character as well. It seems to me that this would also be an excellent series of books for parents to read so that they could have conversations with their children about what happens in the book and say, does any of this reflect anything that happens at your school? Have you ever come across something like this? Did somebody ever bully you? Do you think that it could be used as sort of a door opener for parents? Yes, it can. And Within the school system as teachers, we see a lot that parents have no clue about Right. when um, dealing with students. I mean, I can remember as a teacher, one time we had a fire drill, and two of my students, I didn't see them that morning. They never came to class. So the fire drill, school started at like 8.30. The fire drill was like at 9, I believe, and... During that fire drill, it was told to me that they had jumped the gate of the school. They were in school, but they never came to my class. They jumped the gate, and they went down to the dollar store. They stole some things out of the dollar store. Then they hopped the fence and went back to their home because near my school, near the school where I work, there was a um, foster home. So... Those type of situations do happen, and I I don't think parents know that or are really privy to that type of, you know, information or those type of situations. They do happen. I couldn't agree with you more. I just wanted wanted to bring that into the story just to give them a glimpse of what really goes on sometimes. And how when you have situations or issues like with um, Cokie Michaels, um, a lot of times there aren't enough resources, depending on on the school, to handle the situation. So I just wanted the parents and the students to understand that and to learn more about that and what we go through as teachers sometimes. I don't think parents could possibly understand what, what it's like <laughs> unless they've been a teacher themselves. It's just um, 
it, it's just the dynamics that happen. It, it's like a microcosm of society. You have all of the ills and all of the wonderful things about society in every school. And I don't think parents could ever really understand. I don't think they would want to believe some of the things that their children are doing. And I I taught high school, and I've been out Mm -hmm. of the classroom for longer than I really kind of like to admit, but I remember some of the issues that we had that were concerning for us. And I know that if we had brought any of those issues to the attention of a parent, they would have said, not my child, because no one wants to believe those things about about their child. So good job. I I know that we have, if we haven't titillated the listeners, I can't imagine, because this is just such a wonderful, your writing style, your prose is so much fun to read as an adult. I enjoyed reading the excerpt that I found on Amazon, and we need to let the, the listeners know where they can find the book, and it is there on Amazon, and all they have to do is just put www.amazon.com into the search feature on their computer, and it'll take you right to the website, and then there's a, a big block up at the top where you put in the title of the book and the author. And let me give you the specific title of the book and let me tell you T.T.'s name, etc. The title of the book is There's Something About Cokie Michaels. And this is book two in the Bully Brigade series by T. Period T. Period Floyd F. L-O-Y-D. Click on that. The book will come right up. Up in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the words, Look Inside. If you click on those words, the book magically opens. It, you get an excerpt. And I started to, I, I didn't want to stop. When the excerpt came to an end, I thought, Oh, wait, I want to know what happens. So you <laughs> really did a good job, T.T. There's a really nice Thank excerpt. Thank you. Oh, certainly. It draws you right in. You're a good writer, a very good writer. Now, I know that often there are other places that authors have their books available. Where else, if, if people don't want to go to Amazon for some reason, where else could they find the book? The book is also available at on my website at overflowpressmedia.com, www.overflowpressmedia.com. Um, and if you'd like to check out my Facebook page, it's at Bully Brigade Series. And my Instagram account is the, the Bully Brigade underscore T-O. What else will they find on your website, TT? Because there are some, there are lots of things on there. Of course, there's information about the books. You've got some videos. I mean, there, tell me what else is there. Well, there's um, right now we're having a sale. There's a starter pack where you can get the first three books of the series for twenty dollars. Um, that's our holiday sale, and the fourth book. The Bully Brigade, Trolling Misfits, which is about cyberbullying, is available for pre-order. Wonderful. There's also, I also include a video about my writing style Good for those listeners or readers that are interested. And there are some pictures of you. If the, the readers, listeners want to see what you look like, there's a little video down there where you're talking. And then there's, um, a. it says... What does it say? Meet the author? And there's a whole series of pictures where you've done some book signings? That was the Word of South Festival from last year. So, yes. I loved it. That gives that gives a face to your voice for the, the listeners today. Now, I always think that it's so important. This is your work. And I always think that it's really important for an author to be able to have the last word about their book. 
This is an important book. It's a fun to read book because the characters feel so real and you can just see them. When the reader finishes, when they either electronically close the book for the last time or physically close that back cover for the last time, what do you want them to take away from There's Something About Cokie Michaels? I want the reader to know that they matter. And I also want them to know that there are power, there's power in numbers. So when you see a situation, when you see bullying taking place in your school, don't be afraid to stand up. Stand up for your peers and stand up for yourself. You're so inspirational. You're you're such a good writer. I can only imagine what you must be like in the classroom. It's just been such an absolute pleasure to meet you and talk with you and hear that creative mind of yours talk about the Bully Brigade. T.T., thank you so much for being our guest on Books on Air. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. Remember, you can find the latest Bully Brigade book called There's Something About Cokie Michaels on Amazon. You can also find all of the Bully Brigade books there or on TT's website. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on iTunes as well as iHeartRadio. I'm Suzanne Harris, and I really hope that you'll join me for our next Books on Air podcast because remember... You never know who's going to be here or what we're going to talk about. Thank you so very much for listening.